Okay, so let us begin. So if we remember in the last class, we started proving a theorem about the convergence of the P series, and we try to prove that the P series is convergent if and only if P is greater than one, right? So we already see that whenever P is between zero and one, the series diverges, we prove that. And then we started proving that the series is convergent if and only if the value of P is greater than one, strictly greater than one. And we started that proof and we assume that the P is strictly greater than one and we try to prove the convergence of the series. In order to do that, we try to develop the subsequent, sorry, sequence of partial sums Sn, right? And then you know, in order to prove the convergence of the series, we should prove the convergence of the uh, partial sum. Right? But in order to prove the convergence of the partial sum, what we are trying to do is to, we are trying to develop a subsequent of partial sum, the subsequence of the form is two to the power n, right? With the indices two to the power n. Right? So we pick certain uh, elements from the sequence and create a subsequence. And we are trying to prove the convergence of the subsequence. And so that, that guarantees the convergence of the original sequence. So up to defining the subsequence we did, and then I write down two claims and started uh, the proof, right? So, so this is where we did, right? So I asked you to check something, right? So eventually, Okay, so up to here, I did last time, right? and I asked you to check, because just by writing down the partial sum right, of this form, and subtracting it from, and subtracting partial sum of this form from this form, you can see that 2 to the power n minus 1 cancelled out, so 2 to the power n, and n plus 1, n plus 2, and so on, right, so that is what? you get, right? But eventually all these terms are less so each of the term is less or equal to two to the power n to the power p, right? Because these values are bigger. So this one is, this denom is smaller than the previous one. So obviously the, whenever you take the inequality, it gets bigger, right? And then there are two to the power n terms here. You can see that two to the power n, two to the power n plus, one, right, and all the way up to to the power n plus one minus one, right? So you have basically to the power n terms, right? So that's eventually you can see that one upon two to the power p minus one, yeah. right? Because the Simplify that, you get two to the power p minus one, right? Okay. So this is what you have, right? So what you have is n plus one minus one is actually lesser equal to s two to the power n minus one plus one over two to the power p minus one, one to the power n. Right. So this is the relationship you have. So if you have this relationship, right? And then you can start continuing this, right? So that's basically 
It's let's say equal to Right, so whenever you have two to the power n plus one minus one, you get that is less or equal to two to the power n minus one plus one over two to the power p minus one to the power n. Right, so when you apply that results for this, right, s two n mi minus one, then that is less or equal to s to the power two s two to the power n minus one minus one by same logic, right? Or same argument plus one over two to the power p and n minus one. Right? Whenever you have n here, you have n here. Whenever you have n minus one, n minus one. And then this term is already there, so that's getting down there, right? So basically, this is what you do. Right? So let me use different color pen, right? So this. It's actually less or equal to this, right? So that's the same logic, right? So same argument leads to that inequality. Right? So now, if you continue this process, right? And so, if you continue in this, you get s two to the power n. Plus one minus one is actually let's say equal to one plus one over two to the power p e minus one plus one over two to the power p e minus one squared plus one over two to the power p e minus one to the power n, right? So first step, two to the power p minus one n, and in the second step, you get two to the power p minus one n minus one and two to the power p minus one n, and here you can see the two to the power n, two to the power n minus one. So next time you will have two to the power n minus two, and here n minus two. So you keep on adding, 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 and eventually you will get one. Right. So that's what we write here. So you have this kind of a formula here. So this is actually a geometric series, right? So we already know how to sum the finite geometric series. So you can easily see that this is less than equal to one over one minus two to the power p minus one, right? So this is. Basically, geometric series, right? So you know this. This is the argument. Summation of r to the power n is actually one over one minus r for r less than one. Right. So using this geometric series summation, we can find that s two s to the power right. So s to the power Two n plus one minus one is less than this value. So now you know you see that these are this is this value is fixed, right? Whatever the value you have here is fixed because p is fixed. Uh, all the others are numbers, so eventually this value is fixed. So for any n, right? For any n, you can see that s two to the power n plus one minus one. Is bounded by this, so that tells you, right? So thus, the subsequence. You remember this is the subsequence you define, right? S to the power two n, right? Is bounded above, and so eventually. What you have is, you see that the subsequence s two n is eventually bounded above, 
So check this, I think it should be the other way down. No matter, I check this, I check whether this one is correct or not, right? But somehow you will get about the fixed value, right? So eventually this is what you try to do. You're trying to show that the sequence, subsequence is bounded about, right? But you all know SN is but you all know SN is a monotonically increasing sequence right? because you can simply see that one over n to the power p and uh, p is bigger than one and also n is natural number so that's partial sum is monotonically increasing sequence that's not a big thing for you to verify so but sn is a monotonically increasing sequence so it's two to the power n is basically a subsequent right so you take that as a subsequent so that is also monotonically increasing. So monotonically increasing bounded about so S2N convergence. So this gives S2 to the power N convergence. Okay. So what you have is you have a monotonically increasing sequence and you, then, then you prove that the subsequence of that monotonically increasing sequence is converging. Right. So then by one of the earlier results we studied, we can say that the original sequence also converges. Right, because subsequence is converging, because subsequence is monotonically increasing and bounded above, so it is converging. So the original sequence SN is converging. And if SN is converging, then you know the series is converging because SN is a partial sum. So series also converges, right? So So the partial sum also. Okay, right. So here is the part. So what do you have proved? So we showed right. So now what we you show is you show that if p is greater than one, then the sequence converges. Right. The other way around, now you have to show that if the sequence converges, then the uh, value of P is greater than 1. Right?
Okay, but this we already know, right? So we already know zero less than p less or equal to one implies n to the power p diverges. If you take the negation of this, you get the other way around. Right. So this is something you learned in the other PO mathematics, PMM 101, first chapter, right? Logic. You see that P implies Q. When you take the negation, you get not Q implies not P. So we are applying that statement. Right. So this implies this. So not of this implies not of this. So divergence, negation is convergence, implies this says P is between 0 and 1. So in that case, P should be less than 0 or P should be bigger than 1. Right? So if you say P, if you consider the P less than 0 case and say that that does not work, then obviously P, P greater than 1 is the only choice left. Right? So let me tell you if P is less than zero, okay, but if P is Less than zero, if P is negative, right? You know, one upon n to the power P is n to the power negative P, right? That is basic thing. It's uh, n to the power negative P, but P is already minus. So minus or minus plus. So n to the power positive power. Right? So n to the power positive power. Say P is, if P is minus two, then you will have n to the power plus two, right? One upon n to the power minus 2 is n to the power plus 2. Or if p is minus 10, you get n to the power plus 10, right? So 1 upon n to the power minus 10 is n to the power plus 10. So eventually it's ended up as n to the power positive power. And that will go to infinity as n goes to infinity. So this means the series divergence. This is according to one of the results you studied, right? So theorem, the first theorem of this case, we studied if the series converges, then un will goes to zero. So negation of that is un does not go to zero implies this one diverges. So that's why we say this one is divergent. So eventually this is not possible, right? Hence. And so eventually, summation of n to the power p converges implies p bigger than 1. And so this is how we verify the convergence of the p series, right? So the proof is slightly difficult, not diffic difficult in the sense that you need to do a lot of mechanical work, right? So eventually, the idea is simple. Right, but the mechanical work is difficult, right? You have to write down the partial sum and formula and sum them and do a lot of mechanical work. But eventually, this is the idea, right? So if P is bigger than one, then what you do is you create a subsequence of the partial sum. And then that subsequence is monotonically increasing and bounded above so that it will converge. Because of that, the sequence of partial sum will converge 
and because partial sum converges, the series converges. Okay? That is the case. Other way around, if P is, if the series converges, then we have to show that P must be bigger than one. That we prove it from some other earlier results, right? So we already know if P is between zero and one, the series diverges. So obviously series converges means P must be less than zero or bigger than one. But in the case P less than zero also, we see that series diverges. So the only possibility is P bigger than one. Okay? So that is how we prove this results. So eventually now, whenever you see a series, right, n to the power something, then you can easily tell whether the series will converge or not. That is the idea, or that is a reason for studying this proof, right? So, so as an example, right, so whenever, Right, so whenever you are given series is like this, right, you can tell immediately that whether the series is convergent or divergent, right? So all you need to do, look at is whether P is phi, that is bigger than one, so clearly converges, right? Here, P is half, it is less than one, right? Obviously bigger than zero, but less than one. So diverges. And here, n is equal to minus eight, that is less than zero. So diverges. So whenever you see a series like this, right, you can easily tell whether the series is convergent or divergent, right? So that is why we are studying about the convergence of P series here. The reason for that is, okay, so later on, right, from next section onward, what we are going to do is to, we are going to start talking about test for convergence of series. And so we are going to define different kinds of tests, right, that will help us to verify the convergence of any given series. Right? So in most of the tests, what we are going to do is we are going to compare, compare the given series with some of the known series. Right? So one of those known series is a P series, right? summation of one upon n to the power some P. Right? That series is an easily uh, known series, right? And you can always take a series like this and always try to compare the given series with these kind of series, right? So that's kind of most of the cases, it is easy to compare a given complicated series with one of these P series like this. And once you know the convergence of P series and by those comparisons, you can verify the convergence of other series as well, right? So that is the reason why we started with the P series here, and then we are moving, moving into tests of conversion. So we will study about four or five different tests, right, one by one. Some of them we will prove and some of them we don't prove. We will just take the results and apply the results in the example, right? depending on the time and the availability of time, we will try to see how we can do. Okay, so this is the section. Test for convergence. Okay. First thing, Let us define
first thing is absolute conversion right so we see that we say that the series is absolutely convergent if the series of absolute values of the same term is convergent right so in a series right what you do is you don't look at the convergence of the series what you do is you take the absolute value of the terms and then sum them right and if that series of absolute values is convergent then we say that the original series is absolutely convergent right so that is the example of uh, that is how we define absolute convergence of a series right so in general whenever you say convergent you know that the partial sum is converging right whenever it is absolute convergent it is slightly different right so a series is considered as absolute convergent if the absolute value summation is convergent right so here is the first test i will write that as a theorem right so actually this is test one you can name it as test one but actually it's a theorem so whenever the series is absolutely convergent then it be it is always convergent right in other words every absolutely convergent series is convergent right so uh, we can re rewrite it in a different way and every absolutely convergent series is convergent okay. so whenever you are trying to see whether a series is convergent or not right some cases it is easy to look at the absolute convergence of the series and talk about the results right so first we will try to prove the theorem right and then we shall see so the proof is not a big one so let us define that proof suppose this one is u n is absolutely convergent right so i use abbreviation but now you know the meaning of that right so the series is absolutely convergent you assume that this is absolutely convergent and you have to prove that the series is convergent the absolutely convergent means this right summation of absolute value of u n is convergent right absolute convergent means absolute value of u n summation is convergent right so obviously you know you will always start with epsilon positive the arbitrary that's the standard way of starting a proof here right so that's what so then what you have there x is n belongs to natural number such that absolute value of summation of uk right k running from n plus 1 to m absolute value is less than epsilon or all m bigger than n bigger than n right so you know that cauchy criterion whenever a series is convergent you can write down the cauchy criterion so now series of absolute values is convergent so you write the cauchy criterion for absolute value of u 
right? So you have two absolute values. Okay. But for a finite term, right? And finite terms, right? You take the absolute value in summation and taking the absolute value again, the same as uh, taking it all together, the same, right? So eventually you have, you know this, but But this, you know, right? Triangle inequality extended. You know, A plus B absolute value is less or equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. Now, what you do is you extend it for all these terms A, B, C, D, E, F, right? So, absolute value of A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 is less or equal to absolute value of A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4, and so on, right? So that argument is what we are using here, right? And this is already positive term, right? When you put absolute value, that's already positive. You're taking the summation. So even if you put an absolute value outside, it does not make any difference. Right? Putting an absolute value outside is same as not putting the absolute value because already the terms are positive. So now this is bigger or equal to this, but this is less than epsilon. So eventually this is less than epsilon. You can easily see that. Okay. So, and so you know that eventually you get absolute value of summation of UK is let's say equal to epsilon for all. But that is the definition for convergence, right? So that is for every epsilon positive, there exists in belongs to natural number such that summation of k is equal to n plus 1 to m, uk is less than epsilon for all m bigger than n, bigger than n, right? But this is a definition for. Uh, this is a Cauchy criterion for U, some the series UK or UN, right? So if that is true, then you know obviously N because we already know this implies summation of UN is conversion. And one of the theorems we studied earlier. So we have the series is convergent. Okay. So that's what we wanted to prove. Absolute convergence implies convergent of the series. But you, you should see that the convergent of series does not imply absolute convergence. Right. So let me write that as a note. The converse of this theorem is not true, right? That is, convergence does not imply convergence does not guarantee absolute convergence. 
but absolute convergence always implies convergence right absolute convergence always implies convergence but convergence not necessarily implies absolute convergence right so you also all, always know that if you want to disprove something right the easiest one is to give the counter example right The counter example is alternating series, right? Summation of minus one to the power n plus one over n. That series is convergent. You have to check this as a homework, right? Right. Check these results as a homework, right? The convergence of the series. You try to check it by using one of the results we studied earlier, and maybe we might have done it in an exercise. I don't remember. Uh, you can check it, right, or not. Okay, we didn't do that. So you can check the convergence of this alternating series, right? So you may try to write down the partial sum and uh, see whether the partial sum is converging or not, or you can write the Cauchy criterion and check whether the series is convergent or not by testing the Cauchy criterion, right? So whatever the method you already know, you try to check the convergence of this series as a homework. Right? But when you take the absolute values, right, minus one to the power n plus one, Absolute value of that is always plus one, you know, and n is absolute value is n. So that's basically summation of one upon n. And that series is divergent. We did that in the last class, right? So you can uh, check that right? uh, as a counter example in the Cauchy criterion, right? So, yeah, somewhere as a, you know, application of Cauchy criterion. Uh, not the counter example as an ap application of Cauchy criterion. We prove that the series is divergent by proving that the series is not Cauchy, right? So that's that we already did, but the first part we did not do. So you try that as a home, as a homework at home, right? So that's the counter example here, right? Absolute convergence of the series implies convergence of the series. Okay, so that's one of the uh, tests, the first of the tests we are going to uh, introduce in this course or in this section. Next test is called comparison test. I will just mention you about the test, uh, but we will prove it uh, in a later case, right? So I'll just write down the results only. Uh, proof I will do in the Next class. Uh, test two. You can take it as a test two. We call it comparison test. Test right. So this again. I will write it as a theorem. Okay, let me write it as a theorem here. If zero is less or equal to U n, is strictly is less or equal to V n for all n, 
and summation of Vn if you have zero less than u n less than v n right for all n and the bigger series the series containing the larger term converges then the series containing the smaller terms also converge okay so this is called comparison test you can see that you are comparing two series and if the dominant series is convergent then the other series will automatically convert that is the results we have right? in the next class we will prove this and then we will see examples of this comparison test so i will stop here and then we will continue with the proof of comparison test in the uh, next class tomorrow at 1 p.m.